The yes vote in the Irish referendum on the Lisbon Treaty brought closer to reality the notion of a European Union with one president and one high representative for foreign affairs. That was the intention of those who drew up the 2002 constitutional treaty and included those two new posts. Seven years later, former Institutional Reform Commissioner Michel Barnier is glad Europe finally has a complete toolbox, the Lisbon Treaty. I'm going to meet, to meet, uh, I don't know of any strong policy without a strong institution. But once we know that institutions can be effective thanks to this toolbox, the moment of truth will come when European leaders here in the Parliament or in the Council or the Commission will have the political will to use these tools. Despite Ireland's overwhelming yes, the European Union must remain patient. The resistance of the Eurosceptic Czech president is keeping everybody guessing when and whether the treaty can come into force. Looking now for a new commission and a new council president would be jumping the gun. We need 27 member countries to ratify. That means, at the end of the day, ink on the paper. I mean, they actually have to sign uh, without the clarification that we can see either that this signature is on a paper or that it's totally clear the uh, situation in the Czech Republic. It would be wrong of me to move with this uncertainty that we now are having. The signature of President Václav Klaus is all that's needed for full ratification of the treaty, which has already been approved by both houses of the Czech parliament. The country's top court must rule on whether the treaty conforms to the Czech constitution after a complaint by senators loyal to Klaus. Klaus also wants a clause added that would protect property seized by Czechoslovakia from ethnic Germans after World War II. The pressure on Klaus is growing. No, no, we're going for You can have my pencil to sign uh, and do it now in the interest of everyone. If you continue to withdraw, if you continue to hesitate, you will pay a higher and higher price, not you yourself, but it, you will damage your country's influence in Europe and you will damage the future of your country. Will Klaus be able to single-handedly block the 27-nation EU? In Brussels, few people really think so. Each day the press speculates on who will get the top jobs in a post-Lisbon EU. This journalist believes Tony Blair is the favourite to become the first president of the European Council. He has support clearly from the UK government, uh, and, but also from French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who, who thinks it should be a, burst, a big personality, it's a big job representing the European Union, it should be a big high-profile figure like Blair. But at the same time there's a lot of opposition to him, the Belgium, the Netherlands and the Benelux. Uh, think he's not sufficiently European, the UK is not in the Euro, not in the Schengen uh, uh, free travel zone. Supported by his Labour Party in Britain, the former Prime Minister lacks the backing of Europe's socialists, who are wary of his liberalism and his role in the Iraq war. The EU is uh, in its very heart, uh, in its very core, a peace project, and uh, I'm a bit hesitating that somebody who has engaged in a very doubtful war uh, should be the first president of uh, such an important body uh, as the European Council represents. Having Blair as a stable council president could help bring Britain to the heart of Europe. And as an established statesman, he could bring prestige to the job, the limited role of which includes presiding over the work of the European Council, its four annual summits, as well as representing the EU at global summits. As the head of the Commission is keen to point out, though, the job does not mean the leader of all Europeans. I will not accept that. The European Commission will not accept the idea that the president of the European Council is the president of Europe, because that's not in the treaties. Some are hoping for an alternative to Blair. Among those being mooted are the current or former prime ministers of the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Belgium. The latter, though, doesn't fancy his chances, especially after his bid for the Commission presidency in 2004 was blocked by London. 
It was a bad experience, a bad memory, but this is not the most important thing in this treaty. As for the rest of it, we have to hope that in the future we nominate people who are in favour of European integration. Other names being bandied around include former Finnish PM Paavo Lipponen and current Belgian leader Herman van Rompuy. Some MEPs think the winning candidate will be the least controversial and come from a so-called smaller country. The smaller countries never wanted a council president with massive responsibilities for fear they would widen those responsibilities. It would reassure them if we had someone from a smaller country with a head foreign policy coming from a bigger one. Under the Lisbon Treaty, the successor to Javier Solana would have a dual role as EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Commission Vice President. He or she would have greater political power, a higher budget and a European diplomatic department. For me, it is probably the main innovation, building a common diplomatic culture in Brussels where Europeans can reflect and plan together, develop geopolitical strategy together. How can we build our relationship with Russia, with the Mediterranean community? What transatlantic relationship do we want? Barnier, a former foreign minister himself, refuses to confirm or deny his interest in the job. French officials have also proposed Hubert Vedrin, a socialist former foreign minister. And the German socialists, despite their domestic election defeat, are supporting social democrat Frank Walter Steinmeier. Uh, so this is not it's quite fair uh, that the socialist party in Europe, as the second largest group, uh, will not be excluded from the three leading posts in the European Union, the Commission President, the President of the Council and the High Representative. We must at least, in, in the name of democracy and openness and fairness, have one of the three. And we will insist on having the High Representative uh, as socialists and social democrats. And why not a liberal, like Olli Rehn, the current Enlargement Commissioner who says he's interested he has a solid reputation and would go well with a Conservative Commission president like Barroso and a Socialist Council president such as Blair, but other criteria need looking at. There are many factors to consider. North, South, East, West, old states, new states. Personally, I'd like to see a woman. There's a lot to weigh up and there are very few posts, so we'll see. With the EU still waiting on the checks, the champagne is being kept on ice and the talking continues. There's still time to think about what the European dream team would look like.